सीआईटी एन सीईआरटी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ साइंस फॉर क्लास सेवन एंटाइटल्ड साइंस दिस इज द लेसन टू न्यूट्रिशन इन एनिमल्स फ्रॉम पेज इलेवन टू पेज ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट्स लिसन टू द लेसन टू न्यूट्रिशन इन एनिमल्स page 11 you have learned in chapter 1 that plants can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis but animals cannot animals get their food from plants either directly by eating plants or indirectly by eating animals that eat plants some animals eat both plants and animals recall that all organisms including humans require food for growth repair and functioning of the body animal nutrition includes nutrient requirement mode of intake of food and its utilization in the body you have studied in class 6 that food consists of many components try to recall and list them below 1 blank 2 blank 3 blank 4 blank 5 blank 6 blank the components of food such as carbohydrates are complex substances these complex substances cannot be utilized as such so they are broken down into simpler substances the breakdown of complex components of food into simpler substances is called digestion there is a chain of complex substance given here with the help of digestion it breaks down and takes a circular shape it will now be called simpler substances 2.1 different ways of taking food the mode of taking food into the body varies in different organisms bees and hummingbirds suck the nectar of plants infants of human and many other animals feed on mother's milk snakes like the python swallow the animals they prey upon some aquatic animals filter tiny food particles floating nearby and feed upon them activity 2.1 what is the type of food and mode of feeding of the animals given here write down your observations in the given table you may find the list of modes of feeding given below the table helpful table 2.1 various modes of feeding there is a table given here it has three columns In the first column is written name of animal. Second column you have to fill with kind of food. The third column you have to fill with the mode of feeding. The names of the animals are as follows: snail, ant, eagle, hummingbird, lice. mosquito butterfly house fly the modes of feeding to help you are also given here scraping chewing siphoning capturing and swallowing sponging sucking etc page 12 amazing fact starfish feeds on animals 
covered by hard shells of calcium carbonate. After opening the shell, the starfish pops out its stomach through its mouth to eat the soft animal inside the shell. The stomach then goes back into the body and the food is slowly digested. Figure 2.1 Starfish 2.2 Digestion in Humans We take in food through the mouth, digest and utilize it. The unused parts of the food are defecated. Have you ever wondered what happens to the food inside the body? The food passes through a continuous canal. You can observe this in figure 2.2. This begins at the buccal cavity and ends at the anus. The canal can be divided into various compartments. 1. The buccal cavity 2. Food pipe or esophagus 3. Stomach 4. Small intestine 5. Large intestine ending in the rectum and 6. The anus It is not a very long path. These paths together form the alimentary canal or the digestive tract. The food components gradually get digested as food travels through the various compartments. The inner walls of the stomach and the small intestine and the various glands associated with the canal such as salivary glands, the liver and the pancreas secrete digestive juices. The digestive juices convert complex substances of food into simpler ones. The digestive tract and the associated glands together constitute the digestive system. Figure 2.2 Human Digestive System In this diagram, we can see buccal cavity at the top. Below it is the salivary gland. Then, there is a long pipe. This is the esophagus. At the end of this pipe, we find the stomach. Below the stomach, there are pancreas. Below the pancreas, we find the tube-like structures of small intestine and large intestine. Below it is the rectum and at the end we find the anus. Now, let us know what happens to the food in different parts of the digestive tract. The mouth and buccal cavity. Food is taken into the body through the mouth. The process of taking food into the body is called ingestion. Page 13 We chew the food with the teeth and break it down mechanically into small pieces. Each tooth is rooted in a separate socket in the gums. We can observe this in figure 2.3. Our teeth vary in appearance and perform different functions. Accordingly, they are given different names. We will know more about this with the help of figure 2.3. Milk teeth and permanent teeth Do you remember about falling off your teeth some years ago? The first set of teeth grows during infancy and they fall off at the age between 6 to 8 years. These are termed milk teeth. The second set that replaces them are the permanent teeth. The permanent teeth may last throughout life or fall off during old age or due to some dental disease. There's a thought bubble given here. 
a picture of Bojo is next to it. Bojo is fascinated by the highly coiled small intestine we observed in figure 2.2. He wants to know its length. Would you like to make a wild guess? We have given its approximate length on page 16. Just imagine how such a long structure is accommodated in a small space within our body. Activity 2.2 Wash your hands. Look into the mirror and count your teeth. Use your index finger to feel the teeth. How many kinds of teeth could you find? Take a piece of an apple or bread and eat it. Which teeth do you use for biting and cutting and which ones for piercing and tearing? Also find out the ones that are used for chewing and grinding. Record your observations in Table 2.2. There is a table given here. In this table, there are three rows and three columns. The first column tells us about the type of teeth. In the second column, you have to write the number of teeth. This column has been subdivided into two parts, lower jaw and upper jaw. In the third and final column, you have to write the total number of teeth. The types of teeth are cutting and biting teeth, piercing and tearing teeth, chewing and grinding teeth. Figure 2.3 Arrangement of teeth and different type of teeth In this diagram, we can observe the types of teeth in upper jaw or lower jaw. In the front, there are four incisors. Behind them are two canines, one on each side. Further back are four premolars, two on each side. And at the end are six molar teeth. 3 on each side. Page 14 Our mouth has the salivary glands which secrete saliva. Do you know the action of saliva on food? Let us find out. Activity 2.3 Take two test tubes. Label them A and B. In test tube A, Put 1 teaspoon of boiled rice. In test tube B, keep 1 teaspoon of boiled rice after chewing it for 3 to 5 minutes. Add 3 to 4 milliliter of water in both the test tubes. You can observe this in figure 2.4. Now, pour 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution in each test tube and observe. Why is there a change in color in the test tubes? Discuss the results with your classmates and your teacher. The saliva breaks down the starch into sugars. Figure 2.4 Effects of saliva on starch there are two test tubes given here. They are marked A and B. In test tube A, we can observe boiled rice. In test tube B, we observe boiled and chewed rice. Both the test tubes are filled with water and iodine solution. We can observe that in test tube A, the water has changed color and taken a purplish tint. Sweets and Tooth Decay Normally, bacteria are present in our mouth. 
but they are not harmful to us. However, if we do not clean our teeth and mouth after eating, many harmful bacteria also begin to live and grow in it. These bacteria break down the sugars present from the leftover food and release acids. You will get to learn more about acids in Chapter 5. The acids gradually damage the teeth. We can observe this in Figure 2.5. This is called tooth decay. If it is not treated in time, it causes severe toothache and, in extreme cases, results in tooth loss. Chocolates, sweets, soft drinks and other sugar products are the major culprits of tooth decay. Therefore, one should clean the teeth with a brush or datun and dental floss at least twice a day and rinse the mouth after every meal. If you are wondering what a dental floss is, it is a special strong thread which is moved between two teeth to take out trapped food particles. Also, one should not put dirty fingers or any unwashed object in the mouth. Figure 2.5 Gradual Decay of Tooth In this picture, we can see four images of tooth. The tooth is gradually turning into brown color because of decay. Sometimes when you eat in a hurry, talk or laugh while eating, you may cough, get hiccups or a choking sensation. This happens when food particles enter the windpipe. The windpipe carries air from the nostrils to the lungs. It runs adjacent to the food pipe. But inside the throat, air and food share a common passage. Then, how is food prevented from entering the windpipe? During the act of swallowing, a flap-like valve closes the passage of the windpipe and guides the food into the food pipe. If by chance food particles enter the windpipe, we feel choked, get hiccups or cough. The tongue is a fleshy muscular organ attached at the back to the floor of the buccal cavity. It is free at the front and can be moved in all directions. Do you know the functions of the tongue? We use our tongue for talking. Besides, it mixes saliva with the food during chewing and helps in swallowing food. We also taste food with our tongue. It has taste buds that detect different tastes of food. We can find out the position of taste buds with the help of this activity we will do now. Page 15 Activity 2.4 1. Prepare a separate sample each of 1. Sugar solution 2. Common salt solution 3. Lemon juice and 4. Juice of crushed neem leaf or bitter gourd 2. Blindfold one of your classmates and ask her or him to take out the tongue and keep it in straight and flat position. 3. Use a clean toothpick to put the above samples one by one on different areas of the tongue, as you can observe in Figure 2.6. Use a new toothpick for each sample. 4. Ask the classmate which areas of the tongue could detect the sweet, salty, sour and bitter substances. 5. Now, write down your observations and label Figure 2.6. Repeat this activity 
with other classmates. Figure 2.6 Regions of the tongue for different tastes This is the diagram of a tongue. It has been divided into five parts based on different tastes. The food pipe or esophagus The swallowed food passes into the food pipe or esophagus. We can observe this in figure 2.2. The food pipe runs along the neck and the chest. There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Paheli is next to it. Paheli wants to know how food moves in the opposite direction during vomiting. Figure 2.7 Movement of the food in the esophagus of the alimentary canal. In this diagram, we can observe the food moving through the esophagus towards the stomach. Page 16 Food is pushed down by movement of the wall of the food pipe. Actually, this movement takes place throughout the alimentary canal and pushes the food downwards. We can observe this in figure 2.7. At times, the food is not accepted by our stomach and is vomited out. Recall the instances when you vomited after eating and think of the reason for it. Discuss with your parents and teacher. The stomach. The stomach is a thick walled bag. Its shape is like a flattened J and it is the widest part of the alimentary canal. It receives food from the food pipe at one end and opens into the small intestine at the other. The inner lining of the stomach secretes mucus, hydrochloric acid and digestive juices. The mucus protects the lining of the stomach. The acid kills many bacteria that enter along with the food and makes the medium in the stomach acidic and helps the digestive juices to act. The digestive juices break down the proteins into simpler substances. The small intestine The small intestine is highly coiled and is about 7.5 meters long. It receives secretions from the liver and the pancreas. Besides, its wall also secretes juices. The liver is a reddish-brown gland situated in the upper part of the abdomen on the right side. It is the largest gland in the body. It secretes bile juice that is stored in a sac called the gall bladder. We can observe this in figure 2.2. The bile plays an important role in the digestion of fats. The pancreas is a large cream-colored gland located just below the stomach. We can observe this in figure 2.2. The pancreatic juice acts on carbohydrates, fats and proteins and changes them into simpler forms. The working of the stomach was discovered by a strange accident. In 1822, a man named Alexis St. Martin was badly hit by a shotgun. The bullet had seriously damaged the chest wall and made a hole in his stomach. He was brought to an American army doctor, William Beamont. The doctor saved the patient but he could not close the hole properly and left it bandaged. We can observe this in figure 2.8. Beamont took it as a great opportunity to see the inside of the stomach through the hole. He made some wonderful observations. Beamont found that the stomach 
was churning food. Its wall secreted a fluid which could digest the food. He also observed that the end of the stomach opens into the intestine only after the digestion of the food inside the stomach is completed. Figure 2.8 Alex St. Martin's Shotgun Wound In this picture, we can observe a man who has been hit by a bullet near his abdomen. Page 17 The partly digested food now reaches the lower part of the small intestine, where the intestinal juice completes the digestion of all components of the food. The carbohydrates get broken into simple sugars, such as glucose, fats into fatty acids, and glycerol and proteins into amino acids. Absorption in the small intestine The digested food can now pass into the blood vessels in the wall of the intestine. This process is called absorption. The inner walls of the small intestine have thousands of finger-like outgrowths. These are called villi or in the singular form villus. Can you guess what the role of villi could be in the intestine? The villi increase the surface area for absorption of the digested food. Each villus has a network of thin and small blood vessels close to its surface. The surface of the villi absorbs the digested food materials. The absorbed substances are transported via the blood vessels to different organs of the body where they are used to build complex substances such as the proteins required by the body. This is called assimilation. In the cells, glucose breaks down with the help of oxygen into carbon dioxide and water and energy is released. The food that remains undigested and unabsorbed enters into the large intestine. Large Intestine The large intestine is wider and shorter than small intestine. It is about 1.5 meter in length. Its function is to absorb water and some salts from the undigested food material. The remaining waste passes into the rectum and remains there as semi-solid feces. The fecal matter is removed through the anus from time to time. This is called ejection. Diarrhea Sometime you may have experienced the need to pass watery stool frequently. This condition is known as diarrhea. It may be caused by an infection, food poisoning or indigestion. It is very common in India, particularly among children. Under severe conditions, it can be fatal. This is because of the excessive loss of water and salts from the body. Diarrhea should not be neglected. Even before a doctor is consulted, the patient should be given plenty of boiled and cooled water with a pinch of salt and sugar dissolved in it. This is called Oral Rehydration Solution or ORS. 2.3 Digestion in Grass-Eating Animals have you observed cows, buffaloes and other grass-eating animals chewing continuously even when they are not eating? Actually, they quickly swallow the grass and store it in a part of the stomach called rumen. You can observe this in figure 2.9. Here, the food gets partially digested and is called Cud. Page 18 But later, the cud 
returns to the mouth in small lumps and the animal chews it this process is called rumination and these animals are called ruminants there's a thought bubble given here a picture of paheli is next to it paheli wants to know why these animals cannot chew food properly at the time they take it in there's another thought bubble here with the picture of bojo next to it bojo wants to know why we cannot digest cellulose like the cattle do the grass is rich in cellulose a type of carbohydrate in ruminants like cattle deer etc bacteria present in rumen helps in digesting of cellulose many animals including humans cannot digest cellulose animals like horses rabbit etc have a large sac like structure called cecum between the esophagus and the small intestine you can observe this in figure 2.9 the cellulose of the food is digested here by the action of certain bacteria which are not present in humans figure 2.9 digestive system of ruminant this is the picture of a cow eating grass the grass through the esophagus moves towards the stomach we can observe rumen inside the stomach then the grass move towards small intestine and from there on towards large intestine we can also observe the cecum close to the stomach so far you have learned about animals which possess the digestive system but there are many small organisms which do not have a mouth and a digestive system then how do they acquire and digest food in the section below you will learn another interesting way of food intake 2.4 feeding and digestion in amoeba amoeba is a microscopic single celled organism found in pond water amoeba has a cell membrane a rounded dense nucleus and many small bubble like vacuoles in its cytoplasm we can observe this in figure 2.10 amoeba constantly changes its shape and position it pushes out one or more finger like projections called pseudopodia or false feet for movement and capture of food figure 2.10 amoeba in this figure we can observe an amoeba around its center is the nucleus around the boundary of the amoeba is pseudopodium we can observe food particle being ingested from one side and ingested waste coming out from the other side there are also food vacuoles inside the amoeba page 19 amoeba feeds on some microscopic organisms when it senses food it pushes out pseudopodia around the food particle and engulfs it the food becomes trapped in a food vacuole you can observe this in figure 2.10 digestive juices are secreted into the food vacuole they act on the food and break it down into simpler substances gradually the digested food is absorbed the absorbed substances are used for growth maintenance and multiplication 
the undigested residue of the food is expelled outside by the vacuole. The basic process of digestion of food and release of energy is the same in all animals. In a later chapter, you will learn about the transport of food absorbed by the intestine to the various parts of the body. Keywords Absorption Amino acid Amoeba Assimilation Bile Buccal cavity Canine Cellulose Digestion Ejection Fatty acid Food vacuole Gall bladder Glycerol Incisor Ingestion Liver Milk teeth Molar Permanent teeth Esophagus Pancreas Premolar Pseudopodia Rumen Ruminant Rumination Salivary glands Willy Saliva What you have learned 1. Animal nutrition includes nutrient requirement, mode of intake of food and its utilization in the body. 2. The human digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and secretory glands. It consists of the 1. Buccal cavity 2. Esophagus 3. Stomach 4. Small intestine 5. Large intestine ending in rectum and 6. Anus The main digestive glands which secrete digestive juices are 1. The salivary glands 2. The liver and 3. The pancreas The stomach wall and the wall of the small intestine also secrete digestive juices. 3. The modes of feeding vary in different organisms. 4. Nutrition is a complex process involving 1. Ingestion 2. Digestion 3. Absorption 4. Assimilation and 5. Ejection Page 20 5. Digestion of carbohydrates like starch begins in the buccal cavity. The digestion of protein starts in the stomach. The bile secreted from the liver, the pancreatic juice from the pancreas and the digestive juice from the intestinal wall complete the digestion of all components of food in the small intestine. The digested food is absorbed in the blood vessels from the small intestine. 6. The absorbed substances are transported to different parts of the body. Water and some salts are absorbed from the undigested food in the large intestine. 7. The undigested and unabsorbed residues are expelled out of the body as feces through the anus. 8. The grazing animals like cows, buffaloes and deer are known as ruminants. They quickly ingest, swallow their leafy food and store it in the rumen. Later, the food returns to the mouth and the animal chews it peacefully. 9. Amoeba 
ingests its food with the help of its false feet or pseudopodia the food is digested in the food vacuole exercises 1 fill in the blanks a the main steps of nutrition in humans are blank 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 and blank b the largest gland in the human body is blank c the stomach releases hydrochloric acid and blank juices which act on food d the inner wall of the small intestine has many finger like outgrowths called blank e amoeba digests its food in the blank 2 mark t if the statement is true and f if it is false a digestion of starch starts in the stomach b the tongue helps in mixing food with saliva c the gall bladder temporarily stores bile d the ruminants bring back swallowed grass into their mouth and chew it for some time 3 tick mark the correct answer from the options given a fat is completely digested in the 1 stomach 2 mouth 3 small intestine four large intestine page 21 b water from the undigested food is absorbed mainly in the one stomach two food pipe three small intestine four large intestine four match the items of column 1 with those in column 2 column 1 food components carbohydrates proteins fats column 2 product or products of digestion fatty acids and glycerol sugar amino acids 5 what are villi what is their location and function 6 where is the bile produced which component of the food does it help to digest 7 name the type of carbohydrate that can be digested by ruminants but not by humans give the reason also 8 Why do we get instant energy from glucose? 9 Which part of the digestive canal is involved in? 1 Absorption of food 2 Chewing of food 3 Killing of bacteria 4 Complete digestion of food 5 formation of feces 10 write one similarity and one difference between the nutrition in amoeba and human beings 11 match the items of column 1 with suitable items in column 2 column 1 a salivary gland b stomach C liver D rectum E small intestine F large intestine column 2 1 bile juice secretion 2 storage of undigested food 3 saliva secretion 
4. Acid release 5. Digestion is completed 6. Absorption of water 7. Release of feces Page 22 Label figure 2.11 of the digestive system Figure 2.11 A part of human digestive system There is a figure given here. In this figure, all the parts of human digestive system are present. You have to mark what is the name of these parts. 13. Can we survive only on raw, leafy vegetables or grass? Discuss. Extended learning, activities and project. 1. Visit a doctor and find out. 1. Under what conditions does a patient need to be on a drip of glucose? 2. Till when does a patient need to be given glucose? 3. How does glucose help the patient recover? Write the answers in your notebook. 2. Find out what vitamins are and get the following information. 1. Why are vitamins necessary in the diet? 2. Which fruits or vegetables should be eaten regularly to get vitamins? Write a one-page note on the information collected by you. You may take help of a doctor, a dietitian, your teacher or any other person or from any other source. Page 23 Collect data from your friends, neighbours and classmates to know more about milk teeth. Tabulate your data. One way of doing it is given here. There's a table given here. In this table, there are 5 columns and 5 rows. In the first column, we have the serial number. In second column, we have age at which first tooth fell. In the third column, we have age at which last tooth fell. In the fourth column, we have number of teeth lost. And in the fifth column, we have number of teeth replaced. Find out from at least 20 children and find the average age at which children lose the milk teeth. You may take help of your friends. Did you know fats in goat's milk are much simpler than those in cow's milk? Therefore, the goat's milk is much easier to digest than the cow's milk. The chapter 2 of total 18 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Akash Ahuja Producer Vandana Arimardhan Presented by C.I.E.T. N.C.E.R.T. New Delhi, India